Hi guys, Cooper here from the Unquote Podcast. Unquote delves into what makes movie quotes so, well, quotable. See, I have a guest each week watch a movie selected from the American Film Institute's Top 100 Movie Quotes list, and then we sit down and ponder cultural impingement and cinematic preponderance and... Okay, you got me. My thesaurus was totally open. A little factual and a lot of fun, it's the least contentious peanut gallery in history. Unquote is part of the Rogue Intel Network, and you can find me on iTunes, Facebook, and Twitter. The powerful nerd cast. Hello, everyone. I am Christian and I am joined with Corey. Sup, y'all? We are here to talk about nerdy pop culture things. This is a powerful nerd cast, guys. So, welcome to it. It is now episode 57. We are on our way to 100, Corey. We, we are. are marching forward, unstoppable. A little over halfway. Uh, we got some cool things to talk about today. Uh, one, we got this brand new Future Trunks arc, which is getting ready to start up in Dragon Ball Super, which is also going to feature the return of a brand new villain who goes by the name of Black Goku. Not only that, but next week is E3. That's right, it is Christmas for video game nerds. This is when we're going to figure out all the brand new games, which are going to be releasing on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and of course, the much maligned Wii U. That's right. I remember right. that system. <laughs> yep. I play Smash Brothers on it. Mm -hmm. You almost considered buying a Wii U. You were telling me that earlier. Yeah, I was like, oh, dude, they got a package where it's a Wii U, Splatoon, and Smash Brothers. And I was like, yeah. those are like the only games I care about. Mm-hmm. We Fit is not doing it for me. No, We <laughs> Fit hasn't been relevant for quite some time. And I'm actually surprised that you liked Splatoon because I showed that to one of my friends who's like a super hardcore gamer. He plays about everything. He played it for like five minutes. He's like, I'm done. This is bullshit. Well, the thing is, I understand the strategy of it. I'm not good at it, but I thought that the idea was actually a lot of fun. So I was like, oh, I get this. But I also really, really suck. Not good at that game at mm. all. But Smash Brothers, you know, I'm like an average C-level player. You can hold your own. Yeah, as long as no one's, like, super good. If someone's, like, tournament level, then mm -hmm. I never win, but... And we just got back from Momocon, and some of those guys are just fucking amazing at those games. Yeah, but some of those guys also, like, cheat. Like, they'll team up and not say it, and then they'll kick your ass in group battles. That's exactly what happened to me in one <laughs> match. Yeah, I know. Like, one guy will just sit in the corner with a bunch of lives and let everyone duke it out, and then he'll come in and, you know, then high-five his bros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, we're so good, because we cheat. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of some of that, too. Like, when we were uh, at Momocon, I, uh, I brought my GameCube adapter, I brought my WaveBird wireless GameCube controller, and I hooked up and started playing with some guys. And we were playing, like, uh, the brand new modes in Smash Brothers. You have, like, eight fighters at once. So it's just absolute chaos. And we were playing on Hyrule Castle, which is a stage from Super Smash Brothers Melee. And, you know, even during that match, I was kind of holding back a little bit. I would, like, hit someone, and then I would run away. And then just sort of let them do their thing. Sometimes I would jump up on, like, the uh, the tall pillar and start doing poses just to kind of mess with people. Yeah. But when it came down to, like, the final thing, it was, like, me, a Little Mac, and another Little Mac. And that one Little Mac was just sitting in the corner on the other side, literally just crouching down the whole time. Oh, while yeah. I am constantly just trying to run away from this other Little Mac. And that Little Mac had more lives than anyone. Why is why are they not fighting each other? Because they just wanted to end up having a Little Mac versus Little Mac battle. So after a couple matches of that, I said, fuck this. I'm going over to the tables where it's just one-on-one. -on -one. And I started having a lot more fun there. Had some wins, had some losses, made some friends. It was really cool. And even learned uh, some tips and tricks about characters that I didn't even know. Which, uh, that was definitely one of my favorite things about Momocon. Well, it sounds like some standard first world problems, Corey, right yeah. there. You know, it's it's, like, it is extreme <laughs> first world problems. It's, uh, you know, when your house is too big, you need two Wi-Fi routers. You know, like that kind of shit. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that honestly kind of makes me sick a little bit. But I saw this um, hilarious video where they had, like, poor African people, like, reading all these first world problems. And that was always, I hate when the AC is too cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what so i hate when the lion eats my family <laughs> that's a pretty fucking serious problem i hope my african accent isn't too offensive i'm sorry guys i find wow. it very interesting it's very easy to offend people nowadays but um yeah the fact that you didn't dive into a wii u honestly at this point i wouldn't recommend it anyway but only because 
there's probably going to be a new Nintendo system coming out in 2017, and there's a good chance that they're just going to take this version of Smash Brothers, upgrade it slightly, and put it on the brand new can system. Can you watch Netflix on the Wii U? You can. You can? Yeah. They put a Netflix app on yeah, it? Yeah, Nintendo decided, you know, just join everybody else after they're like, hey, this internet thing's actually kind of a big deal, you know? Dude, if Wii U didn't have, like, Netflix or, like, HBO Go or any of that stuff, I would be really pissed. I'm of not course. so sure about HBO Go. Yeah, I, I can only watch HBO Go on uh, a tablet that I can download apps or mm. my PlayStation 4. My smart TV doesn't have it, and I was actually really pissed. Mm. I was like, how come I can't install an app on my fucking brand new 4K Samsung that has all these other apps, you know? I mean, HBO Go is it's a fairly new thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it started last year. Mm -hmm. It's because HBO gets that you can't sell. like they're They're like, we know you just want some of our shows, and you don't want to pay whatever you need to pay to add it onto a cable program. So now you can like buy channels a la carte or a la carte, a la carte. Mm -hmm. I can't ever a la carte one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why is there, is there an anime character named a la carte? Yeah. A la carte. <laughs> not a la carte. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell thing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, remind me of that. But yeah, like now, now content providers are understanding we should all have our own apps mm -hmm. so people can watch the shows they want. And mm -hmm. maybe people only want showtime shows. Yeah. Uh, I know my girlfriend loves this show, Outlander. I think that's it. It's about this this show about a woman that uh, just got done with World War II, and then she gets transferred back in time like 100 years to Scotland, you know, it, and it, drama yeah. ensues and girl shit. I don't know. She likes it. I don't know. For some odd reason, I don't know anything about that show. Like, you probably just told me more than I've ever learned about it. Every time I hear the title, I, this is so stupid because I'm an old-school horror geek. It always reminds me of Children of the Corn. I don't know if you remember there, and they they parodied this in South Park too. I never saw the, the movie. The but scene I know where what you're they talking. capture uh, what's her name, the the main female from Terminator. I always forget her name. Linda Hamilton. Sarah Connor. Yes, yeah, Sarah Connor. <laughs> okay. More commonly known as Linda Hamilton. Yeah. Although, actually, no, I take no, that back. More Probably commonly, more commonly known as Sarah Connor. <laughs> yes. Um, there's a scene towards the end where they capture her and they bring her out into like the streets and the square, and you have this like one older kid and he's constantly screaming, "Outlander, we have your woman!" And then they parodied that in an episode of South Park where uh, all the kids took over the town, and uh -huh. then they had two adults come in, and they realize that you know these kids have taken over, and Cartman does the same thing with Outlander, and that's every time I hear that show, that's all I think of. Well, I don't nothing... recommend Children of the Corn, by the way. It's a shitty movie. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. Mm -hmm. I heard that uh, there was a famous actress that did like. Aren't there like three of them or something? Dude, there's way more than that. Damn! Which is a huge... Now, keep in mind, these were not all released to theaters, and a lot of them were like straight to VHS it, it in the of, 90s. It did what like Trimmers did. It, it started strong and sort of faded out yeah. into straight to DVD land. I think we're overdue for a, a real Tremors reboot, though. I want Kevin Bacon in it. I'm yeah. sorry. Supposedly, they are working on a new show that Kevin Bacon's involved with. If that's true, that could be pretty big. Like, a new show? Yeah, I think Kevin Bacon's finally at the age where he's kind of like, you know what, I'm getting older, I've had my run, I've been in a lot of successful movies, I'm going to give one back to the fans. I'm going to be in the Tremors TV show, which would be great, because a lot of the actors who are in those movies have completely sailed away from that, and it's pretty much all been on the shoulders of that one actor whose name, again, I just cannot remember. The guy but he with always all the wears, guns? Yeah, he always wears, uh, the character's name is Bert. Um, and he always wears a hat. He always has sunglasses. He's basically Del Gribble from King of the Hill. Yeah. And uh, I always liked him because he always wore an uh, Atlanta Hawks hat. Yeah, well, the, if you want to see who this character is, just search Tremors Shootout. Yeah. Or sh Basement Shootout, and you can watch this character shoot this giant worm monster. With <laughs> you every... broke into the wrong goddamn rec room, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, like, that's uh, that was a, a, fun, uh, a fun scene, and you should check that out. Do you know that scene was done with a little miniature puppet? Oh, and they just like had like squids and stuff going off yeah, around. Yeah, like it? what's it's it's amazing use of technology. Like it really does look like they're in the room with it, but the actual yeah. like tremor or the the graboid that's what they're called in the yeah, movies graboids. that they're shooting at that's actually like just a really elaborate hand puppet, and they composited the two shots together, and, and they really work. And since it's a, a real object, it does feel like it's there. So if they Don't, ever did do like you a ruin big that room. scene for me now, Corey. Now so. I'm gonna now I'm gonna just think of a dude in a sock puppet with like. <laughs> <laughs> little, little worms coming out. It still out. looks good. Yeah, it does look yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd prefer that over just like a big CG monster that was just overly animated and moving too damn much. That thing actually felt like it was kind of like real. I, I like Doomsday more from Batman Superman. <sighs> no, I didn't. I'm lying. Dickless monster. <laughs> but anywho, uh, l let's get back Why to... Why do you uh, care about his gender role, Corey? <sighs> <laughs> you cisgender... <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's steer this conversation in another direction. Um, Away going, from go, gender roles. Yeah, going back to your, your PS4 and the Wii U and everything, like I said, it'd probably be better just to wait for the next Nintendo system. It's hopefully going to be more powerful, integrating uh, you know, maybe some more features like HBO Go. Of course, it's going to have Netflix. Hell, even the Wii. Before the Wii U had Netflix. Really? I didn't even know The 3DS that. has Netflix. What? Yeah. Whoa. They got all that shit. I thought, I really thought Nintendo was still like a super closed environment. I mean, they still are. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. They fucking are completely out of touch a lot of the times. But they got Netflix on Pat. They're going to come out with a digital console that you can play on a smartphone soon. They're going to come out with that eventually. We'll see how successful it is, though. I don't know. It's it's hard. You got to be almost like, at this point, you have to be kind of like a household name. And, you know, Xbox has proved itself clearly. It's still yeah. a big seller. PlayStation's been around forever. Nintendo is just, you know, it's the king of consoles, just not the king of sales. Simple as that. Um, but with E3 coming up, I have a lot of high hopes, at least, that uh, we'll get to see some interesting things. Um, is there any sort of, like, series or game series you kind of want to see? I just want Oculus to come out with more games, and I want it to come... I don't like that you have to have a powerful PC to have an Oculus. They need to figure out a way, like, either you wear, like, a little backpack computer or something. Like, they need to figure out some... All right, if I got to start wearing backpacks... Yeah, but, like... To play games. Oh, well, what about if it came out with its own console that you could get connected to? Either way, you got to be tethered to something. So why not have it on your back, you know, or something? Especially because VR gaming can be kind of dangerous. Like, there's so many videos of people just busting ass or... Especially Freaking when they're out, playing, yeah, when they're know? playing horror games and stuff. Yeah, they like, freak out. Yeah, and then like even that video we show, I showed you of a uh, one of our friends. Uh, he, he put it on his dad, <laughs> and then his dad ran into a painting and yeah. knocked it over. And he was like, "Ah, oh, what I hit? I don't care." And ah. even though it's fake, and he clearly knows it's fake, like he's still like stumbling all over the place, and just it really does do a good job of putting you, you in the environment. Were a VR, I don't want to say hater, but not believer. Mm-hmm. And then you had tried that uh, Samsung headgear where yeah. you put the phone and, that, in. and that's like not even the greatest quality stuff. No. And it still was immersive as hell. Yeah, so that's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to Oculus Rift mm-hmm. stuff. I want one, but I can't justify buying it because yeah. it's just a big toy at yeah. this point. Like, Let's I want wait till it. it becomes integrated in the systems a little bit more. Almost yeah. becomes like a standard feature. Like, we were talking earlier before the podcast, um, like, if Half-Life ever decides to fucking return with either a new episode or just, heaven help us, a brand new game, they're waiting for the right technology. Don't you think VR would be the technology for that? I mean, they could really make a true, amazing living world that you could explore. Isn't that uh, part of what Half-Life is? It's just such a great world-building game, so mm-hmm. why not take the world experience to the next level? Yeah. So, they, But even if they did decide to do that, Valve, they would either set the bar so high because they'd be amazing, mm-hmm. or they won't do it till they figure it out. So it may still be a long time mm-hmm. till it comes out. I don't know. I've sort of, I, I don't want to say like I've given up on Half Life uh, because I'm not sad that it's not out. I'm just not focusing on if uh, Episode Three will ever come out. Mm-hmm. You know, I've just sort of let that go. You know, I mean, I mean Half Life Two came out over a decade ago. I still remember we were in high school when that shit came out. I know. I remember watching the tech demo videos for that video and just being blown away by the physics of that game yeah you like that, got... that was a huge revolutionary game a lever, blah, revolutionary game in terms of like the physics and how you can move objects and manipulate the environment yeah you should go watch uh half-life 2 tech demo mm-hmm. and this shit came out in like 2004 yeah and there's even a few of them you can see like crowds watching to them and seeing the reaction to this shit yeah like that's how we reacted when we saw it it was amazing because it looked like oh, this is, like, a real world. Like, people take for granted physics and, like, Grand Theft Auto games and stuff. Like, that shit never existed, you know, like, before that. So Half-Life uh, 2 really set the bar pretty high. I want to see what that video is called. I'm going to look it up. The original tech demo? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see VR implemented not only in, uh, you know, like, maybe even a new Half-Life um, and even games on PS4 or Xbox. I'd like to see what Nintendo could do with that because they're a company that's always known for innovation, motion control bullshit, and they're always trying to push the limits of what their games could do. Uh, I, I would love to play a Metroid game in VR. I think that would make an immersive game that much more immersive, um, just being able to explore the worlds like that because I always compare Half-Life and Metroid because they are very similar. They're first-person, well, at least the Metroid Prime series. They're, uh, they're first-person games, but the emphasis is more on exploration and absorbing a world and its characters and everything, and uh, th- that's definitely why... I would have to say that Half-Life and Metroid are my favorite first-person shooter games. Um, 
you know, if I hadn't even met you, I probably never even looked at Half-Life. Um, and I was glad that I had the opportunity to play that first game before I even jumped into 2, which the original Half-Life, I think, despite the fact that it is a little dated with its graphics and stuff, it holds up. It's still a really great game. It's got a great adventure. It still plays pretty well. Um, I love that one. So I looked it up. It's called Half-Life 2 Tech Demo E3 2003. 2003. It's more than 10 years old, and that shit still looks pretty good. Yeah, it's so. impressive. So and the Source engine is still used today. I mean, people still play Counter Strike Go. Oh yeah. Uh, Team Fortress, and I'm sure more games come out with it. The just the Source engine is a good engine, but that also leads me to the point that if they're going to come out with a new Half Life, they're going to build a new engine. Mm -hmm. They're going to build the the, the Source engine. They're going to want to see something that no one's ever seen before. Yeah, they're going to have some amazing AI. They're mm -hmm. going to have you know all sorts of shit, and so that's something that impresses me, and I'm excited mm -hmm. about. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Have, has that always been sort of the case? Even though there's really technically only been two Half Life games, not counting like the uh, the extra episodes. Like, whenever they introduce a game, it's always like no one's ever seen anything like this before. It sort of like breaks the foundation and creates something new. Uh, the problem with Valve is, man, they started making so much money. They realized we can just be the iTunes of PC gaming and yeah. be fine as I a mean, company. I mean, Steam is 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 now like a household name for gamers. Yeah, so like it's, it's like, so you know integrated into just about every system. Yeah, like, it doesn't even bother me. Before you know it, they're going to come out with a way to play all these games on, like, Xbox or something. You mm -hmm. know, like, they're going to have... You already can download a lot of things to your system. So mm -hmm. imagine if they could just download games and utilize the hardware that comes with the system. Mm -hmm. Definitely on the next generation, too, because those games are going to be, you know... Uh, uh, that hardware is going to be a lot better. So mm -hmm. you could technically have a PC system in your house, you know? Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. That could be cool. I mean, we've actually... We've reached that point where, like, home consoles are pretty much as good as PCs at this point, which was vastly different even just 10 years ago. Oh, you yeah. Know, if you had a souped-up PC, that was, like, the best thing you could possibly have. But now these consoles have just caught up so much. I mean, you can still you could still build a beast PC. Like, mm -hmm. I've seen guys, the uh, GTX 1080s or the new graphics card that just came out. Um, I, I just recently started researching this stuff because I wanted to build another computer. And those graphics cards can run like uh, Doom Doom uh, at 4K at like 100 frames, mm -hmm. which is insane. Yeah. You know, that is a really hardware demanding game. Mm -hmm. uh, and to run at 4K at 100 frames per second is insane. Uh, but that's also a $600 card. So it's like <laughs> buying two PS4s Damn. just for the graphics card. Yeah, that's crazy. Because you know? <laughs> they've made these consoles pretty affordable at this point. A lot oh, of yeah. them, some of them are under $300. So, yeah, but also the difference is... Uh, you could just tweak the game so you didn't have to, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to uh, run it at 4K and you could just run it, you know, uh, at less than uh, 100 frames and mm -hmm. it would be fine. You know, like technically you want 60 frames, but 30 frames doesn't even look that bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, what do you think about what they were saying? They were going to come out with a PS4 uh, 0.5. So it can 0.5. Run there, there's I've heard rumors of PS4 4.5. And I've also heard rumors that there's a new Xbox called Xbox Scorpio. Have you heard about any of that? No, I don't know it's Scorpio. Supposedly, you know, it's it's basically just a code name uh, for these new projects that are coming like, out. I don't even think they're going to call the new PlayStation a PlayStation 4.5. I think that would be too confusing for the consumer because it sounds way too close to the PlayStation 4. And Sony's a lot smarter with how they name their systems, unlike Nintendo, who went from the Wii to the Wii U, which just confused a lot of people. So I think they'll give it a much uh, slicker name. Maybe they'll literally just call it the PS4 Slim. You know, like just this is the brand new updated version of the system, but, you know, it can play games in 4K uh, you know, I guess if you, you have to have a 4K TV in order to uh, fully, you know, utilize all of those aspects of it, which, you know, I'm fine with what we have right now. Like, I'm pretty damn content. I don't even have a PS4, but I know a lot of people do, and I play a lot of the games with them, uh, and, and they all look fine. I really don't think there's, we've reached this point where I think there's only so much we can improve upon in terms of graphics. Like you said, I think it's going to be more in the AI in the games that we see that's really going to change. That's what I want. I want people that are companions that are fun to play with you know not just standard npcs that we see in just about every single game yeah where your guy is a little stronger so he mm -hmm. can actually fight three or four of them before he dies you know mm -hmm. like i want some better ai i want some more inventive games i mean mm -hmm. you're already seeing people be inventive because they're they're making games for like smartphones now mm -hmm. and if you're making a smartphone game you have to think outside of hardware because you're not mm -hmm. going to make the most beast game because it's uh, uh, cell phones have limitations, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're seeing, like, fun games like Flappy Birds and fun little, like, games that are interesting, 
you know, everyone remembers Angry Birds. How of fucking, course. And how many games have you played before that that was just pretty much a launching rocks at a castle or something that was a lot like Yeah, I mean, Angry, Angry Birds. Birds really wasn't that revolutionary. Or, in, but it or had, original. But it had a, an identity behind it. It had the cute creatures. It had, had the, the pigs. The sound the, effects. Yeah, the wow. Now it's got a, a shitty movie. I mean, just, oh, you know. That's everything. how big it was, though. It yeah. even got its own shitty CG movie, yeah. you know. So that's that's pretty awesome. Not mm-hmm. really, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I mean, uh, what else are you excited for in E3? I haven't even looked anything up. You know, I forgot that that shit was coming out. You I know? mean, I'm ex- I'm fucking super excited. I cannot wait to see some of those conferences next week. Um, Anybody who knows me really well knows I'm a Nintendo fan. Obviously, I'm excited for that stuff. No, I wasn't I'm, sure about that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not expecting too much from Nintendo this year because they've been very clear. We have a new system coming out in 2017, but for some reason... They're not going to show it at the conference. This is either them just trying to play coy and they are just going to spring this new shit on us. Uh, Mostly they're just showing off this brand new Zelda game, which is coming out, which originally was supposed to come out on the Wii U. It still is, but it doesn't come out until 2017, but it's also coming out on the next Nintendo system as well. So who the fuck is going to buy it on Wii U when you can buy it on the brand new sexy Nintendo console, depending on how different they really are. So pretty much just the new Zelda game from Nintendo is really what I'm looking forward to seeing because we don't know shit about it. And whenever a Zelda game comes out, it's kind of a big deal for fanfare because these things don't come out but like once every six to sometimes eight years. And they spend a lot of time making them. And this game is one that is supposedly going to change a lot of aspects of it. They're going for a more huge open world game. And the map is like five times the size of GTA V. So I really can't wait to see what they're doing with this shit. Um, I'm just, I'm excited. It's fucking Legend of Zelda. It's one of the most classic action adventure series of all time. I'm praying we'll see some new stuff, like just stuff that they're teasing or, you know, like I said, being coy about. Um, For Sony, I'm not really sure what I'm hoping to see from them. Uh, After their success of Uncharted, um, believe it or not, I want to see a reboot of Crash Bandicoot. Because they are the same people, you know, Naughty Dog, they worked on the original Crash Bandicoot game. And in Uncharted 4, there is this Easter egg where uh, Drake and his girlfriend are actually playing PS1 and they're playing Crash Bandicoot and you get to take control of it. Like, you play Crash Bandicoot on PS1 in Uncharted 4. It's really weird, but it's a great Easter egg. And I would love to see them take their their skill and their knowledge of making these Uncharted games and apply that to a 3D platformer because I think 3D platformers are coming back big time, especially in 2017. There's this one game I'm looking forward to which has a ridiculous name and it's going to sound familiar. It's called Ukulele. It's from it's basically the spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie, Ukulele, you get where I'm going with this thing? Nope, barely paying attention. Not it's even boring. paying attention. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm excited for Ukulele. Uh it's a big 3D platformer kind of like the old ones we used to play on N64. Uh, except now with a modern, fresh coat of paint with some brand new characters, and it just reminds me of how much I loved the Banjo-Kazooie games, and their stance on it is like, if Rare's not going to make a game, we're going to fucking make a game, and we're going to make it awesome. They've already released trailers for it just this week, and it's still in the early stages of development, but damn, it just looks so classic and fun. I can't wait for that one. Um, as far as Xbox, I'm just I'm not the biggest Xbox fan in the world. There aren't too many franchises I care about, like... I mean, Halo, Gears of Wars, it's just like, we've been doing that for over a decade at this point. I really haven't seen anything that new and fresh from them. Seems like they've been just sort of constantly relying on, like, you know, the good stuff. Kind of like Nintendo in many ways. Sony tends to be the one that pushes the bar in terms of, like, what type of games they like to make. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, you know, the variety of games that you can get from their systems. Like, with Xbox and Nintendo, you know what you're getting. With Sony, you know what you're getting, but you're also going to get some surprises, too. Yeah, you know, it, it looks interesting. We got some cool stuff. A lot of the stuff we've already seen before, like mm-hmm. new Battlefields, yeah. new Watchdog, new... I don't give a shit about the new Watchdogs. I didn't even like the first one. New Deus Ex, uh, which I loved the first game. Mm-hmm. Such a weird cult, cult classic that showed mm-hmm. you what modern RPG games are like. Did you, you know? not play the, the sequel that came out a few years ago? No, I never played it. You should check it out. I don't have the time. <laughs> and you know we got it was pretty popular with people uh metal gear solid inspired volume what? metal gear solid inspired something i don't know i'm looking up some news um maybe hideo kojima is going to finally show off what his brand new team has been working on that might be true uh, which i think would be fan freaking tastic of course that's going to probably be attached to something with a uh, sony um, but I know they've been hyping up uh, one of their big secret projects right now. It's a brand new IP, of course, because he no longer has uh, 
control of the Metal Gear franchise, which is a big shame. But I mean, yeah. and I don't expect anything Metal Gear related just because we're, you know, Metal Gear Solid Five came out, what, last year? That shit takes a long time to make. Yeah, just it's, it's, whip just like, it's, it's basically like Zelda. You, you wait like four or five years, maybe longer, just to get a new game in the series. But they're always worth it, unless it yeah. has no ending. Yeah, um, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy XV, whatever that number is. I am means. actually kind of excited for that one. I think that's 15. Okay. Um, Final Fantasy 15, it's uh, very different from some of the other ones I've seen. The battle system has completely changed. It's more of a third person action, action RPG. Yeah, it looks a lot more like WoW. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you run around and actually swing and hit the thing instead mm-hmm. of just like go to like a Pokemon style battle. Yeah. You know, even though Final Fantasy came out before Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they're, they're getting away from the turn-based style yes, RPG yes. battles and going for more uh, real-time stuff. What about Resident Evil 2 remake? Oh, You forgot to mention that. That is going to be... I know they're showing that off next week. There's, oh, yeah. There's no way they're not going to show something from Resident Evil 2. Hell, they might even be bold and show us Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 7. And after Resident Evil 6, they are going to have some recovery. They are going to have to do something big with 7. 2, I'm not really worried about, because, I mean... They got the whole game laid out. They're just going to make it look better, play better, or whatever. Maybe add some new... Scena- they need to add new stuff to it, though. Because Resident Evil 2, while great, I have replayed that game over 30 fucking times. And when you get good at playing Resident Evil 2, you can beat it in about two and a half hours. Really? Easy. No problem what because most of the zombies and monsters and that I just run around them half the time because yeah, I don't, don't want to waste my ammo. Yeah, and when you learn how to do that, you just know where everything is. You can just plow through that fucker in no time at all. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to add a lot to this game, or they're just going to have to give us like a lot of different scenarios, which is one of the coolest things about Resident Evil Two. I also plays thought like two, two had the most interesting scenario the city oh without setting. a doubt i mean two two is i think the fan favorite yeah. everybody seems to love it the most yeah um even with the remake and all the new games they've always released i always tend to go back to two i like the characters the setting is just it's great it's a big post-apocalyptic giant city uh the story is cheesy as hell but it sucks you in the bosses are all just really crazy um just yeah they're going to- you get nemesis was he in that? That's one? actually the third game. Okay, he comes Nemesis, in. which is still a great game in its own right. Again, very similar to two. Once you get used to playing it, you can beat that one in about two hours, no problem. Uh, which is good. the The better you get at completing those games, you get actually rewards for beating the game in a certain amount of time, like unlimited ammo and stuff. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil Two. They're just going to have to really blow that one out of the water. I cannot wait to see what they're going to do with that one because it is a pretty dated game too. Like this came out in like 1998. Yeah. Like, this is a 90s game that they're going to have to try and translate into something new. We got the new uh, Legend of Zelda. I'm sure they're going to show that off. Uh, That's all Nintendo's practically showing. Yeah, that's probably it. I mean, they said they're going to show off some new gameplay of Pokemon Sun and Moon, which I'm excited about. But I mean, like, that's I can just a wait. fresh coat of paint. But yeah, I can wait for that. You know, I'm really excited for the new Pokemon game. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not like itching to see that much more of it. I like uh, when Pokemon games, they barely reveal anything until the game comes out. Um, I actually prefer not to see any gameplay of it, period. So that way, when I get into it, it's a super fresh experience. But for like Zelda or something like I got to see a trailer. I got to see that. I'm really excited. They're going to show me off a lot of the gameplay. Just pumped up for that one so i would say zelda and resident evil 2 remake are the games i'm looking forward to seeing the most but there might be surprises it also looks like uh the new battlefield is going to be set in world war one which is kind of interesting, interesting. Going, going the back. exact opposite direction that call of duty is going good in. no more futuristic bullshit that <laughs> i'm done with that for some reason i liked world war ii more than i like that for yeah. some reason uh, you know, the I mean, shooters are, it's hard to get me to like a shooter nowadays just cause we've seen so much. I, st- I am itching to play overwatch though. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to jump on that one yet. My friend says he's going to be picking it up in the next week. So I'll probably have an opportunity then to look at it. Um, but yeah, that, that game's been really, really popular with people. Um, the cosplay community is also just like basically adopting it and making it their own baby. Like, just because there's so many unique characters, 21 unique ones that are all so different. What a beast of a game, man. Because, like, how do you balance all those? I don't know. It, it, it almost... I have heard there has been some imbalance with some of the characters. Like, if you choose certain characters, they're just more overpowered. Or well, also, what they did is... I think there's a rock, paper, scissors uh, sort of setup where, yeah. like, certain characters are more vulnerable to explosions. So, if you're mm-hmm. using, like, a demolition-type person that shoots grenades, then they're bad, you know? Mm-hmm. But then there's people that are strong against explosions, you know, that are more, like, heavy tanks that can yeah. beat those characters up. It's basically Team Fortress. Yeah, it's Team yeah. Fortress. It's, and, and, again, it's a game that does emphasize working as a team. But, I mean, there are people who are getting creative with it. Like, there's some people who will start a match and they'll turn it into, like, a sports game. 
Like, it's, it's, it's weird how it works, but it's true. Like, you can really get creative with that game, and, I mean, the Internet's just having a blast with that one right now. Uh, so that's one I'm definitely looking forward to trying out, even though it is already out. But even with the games I'm looking forward to, it's really the surprises of E3 that I think are the best things. I can't wait to be surprised, and I... God, I pray Nintendo surprises us. I hope they're not just dicking around and just saying we're just doing Zelda. I'm really ready for them to just release something big. If they're bold, they will show something from their new system. They're going to do a new Mario Party. Great. A brand new Mario Party. That's exactly what I need for my palms to be completely destroyed by a fucking control stick. (laughs) Actually, that was just an N64 problem. That happened to all of us. Do you know Nintendo uh, actually released a special Mario Party glove that you can wear so that your palms won't get hurt. That's because when Mario Party came out, a lot of kids started, like, fucking up their hands, and angry moms would write into Nintendo, and they were saying that their uh, kids were getting hurt while playing the game, so Nintendo made these gloves that they could send in. Yeah. So they could actually do that, because a lot of the games required you to take, like, just the, like, if you really wanted to be successful at the mini games, to put your palm on the control stick and turn it really, really fast, because a lot of the games were, uh, revolve around that. I, I absolutely remember that. That's fucked up that you have to sell a glove to prevent you from getting hurt. The center of my skin and the center of my palm just fell off. Yeah. It was like, awful. But my ev- cousin got that game, and we played it, like, all summer. And, like, every day, our hands would just kill after playing Mario Party. Every day I'm hustling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just probably quoting that, guys. Uh, but, yeah, so E3 looks good. I'm excited about E3. Mm-hmm. Uh Still, you know, in my nostalgia heart, E3 2005 is still one of my favorites because mm-hmm. that's when so many systems we know and love today came out. Like, what was it? PS2 and Xbox came out? Uh, or were PS2 was already out. PS2. What, yeah. Why was that year so good then? Because it was the build up to the next generation. It was the build up oh, to okay. PS3 and Xbox. And there was also just a lot of really memorable trailers at the time. That's like when Half Life was just coming out, when they showed off uh, the Zelda trailer for Twilight Princess for the very first time, and the audience just completely lost their shit. That's still the strongest reaction I've ever seen from any E3 trailers when people saw that realistic Zelda for the first time. And they just. There are people who are having religious experiences while watching that. I think someone had a child when that happened, like, in the middle of the audience. It was fucking nuts, man. Like, I still remember that. You can look up that trailer and just... You can feel the emotion from these people. It was great. It was the greatest trailer Nintendo has ever released, and it's so simple and stupid, but all you had to show was a realistic-style dark Zelda game, and everybody just flipped out. But yet, they'll never make it. No, and they did release Twilight Princess, and while it is considered one of the darker entries in the series, it's still a Zelda game at heart, and everybody looks like a fucking anime character, so that's just the way it is. Gonna, I, I've never really want a Zelda game to look like Skyrim, though. I don't want like a super realistic one. I like the stylistic choices that they make. The new game is clearly going to be very stylistic, but we really won't know until next week. I cannot wait to see that, but they've released some concept art, and that's going to give us a good idea of what it's going to look like, and it very much looks like classic Zelda, except that Link apparently is now wearing blue, and he's wearing a hood, which is a little different from what we've seen, although I I have a feeling he'll eventually get his green outfit. They seem to do that with the outfits. They, like, don't want to say, oh, this is the same. Obviously, it's not the same character, Mm -hmm. because Zelda has some weird, like, ancestry sort of timeline i don't really even want to don't even open up not even trying to go there but the the point is you know they want to pretend that oh it's a different character but like it's just Mm -hmm. zelda guys come on put him back in his outfit so or link link you know what i mean call me zelda one more time i've seen so many fan arts where he's like pointing the sword at the screen Mm -hmm. (laughs) in retrospect they probably should have called the series something else but zelda is a focal point of just about every story so it does make sense um but yeah e3 nintendo likes to make Women that can't contribute anything, they're not helpful. They're just women that like to get captured. For the most part. Nintendo sexist. I would sexist. beg to disagree with Samus. Yes. But, uh, you know. Well, sex. that was the last game where she needed help all the time. What are you talking about? Where she uh, would always, like, uh, come into the commander. Like, can I? <laughs> commander? That was Metroid Other M, and we tried to pretend it didn't happen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I actually still own that game. They're Gameplay-wise, it's not that bad. They won't let you trade it in. But They're like, we don't want God, it. God, that story is fucking awful. <laughs> uh, I liked it so much better when Samus didn't talk. But you know what? Let's end it there. That's our E3, our pre-E3 discussion. Uh, hopefully, uh, we get some big reveals next week. We'll be able to have a big show about all the cool things that we saw. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. But the last thing uh, I want to talk about today is this brand new arc 
of Dragon Ball Super, which is coming up. As you guys know, we are huge anime fans. We love Dragon Ball Z. It was probably the most influential anime in our lives. And this next arc that's coming up is going to see the return of Future Trunks, who is a fan favorite character, one of my favorite characters from the series, my third favorite hero character from the series, with Goku and Vegeta taking the top two spots. And as if that's not cool enough, there's also going to be this brand new villain who goes by the name of either Black or Dark Goku. And they've released the very first images of this character who basically looks just like Goku from the side, except one crucial detail. He's wearing these earrings, which are going to look extremely familiar to fans of Dragon Ball Z. You don't know he's wearing two of them. That's what everybody's been saying. It's just because we've only seen it from the side. But for the moment, I'm going to say he's wearing both. Okay. But what's interesting is he's wearing the Potara earrings, which are used in the series when two beings... How long did it take you to practice that name? The or Potara? You, you just knew that? Yeah. That just came out of your head? That's you what did, they are. They're the Potara look, earrings. But you didn't like look that up before we started the podcast? No. Okay, you're just a nerd. I'm sorry. I, dude, I'm a Dragon Ball Z <laughs> fan. No, no. Keep going. Keep going. Like, you know, Piccolo only drinks water. It's stupid facts like that. He ate a fish once. He, ate a, he did eat a fish once. He just had to try. Yeah. It's forbidden fruit. And King Piccolo likes lemon soda, but, excuse me, lime soda. I messed that one up. Do you digress back to the conversation? I digress. Back (laughs) to this conversation. So we got Black Goku here, who basically just looks like Goku with the Potara earrings, which the easiest thing to assume is that he is fused with someone, and who could that be? Now, one of the biggest detractions that a lot of people have said is like, wait a minute, in Trunks' future, isn't Goku dead? Ah, but this is the thing. Potara earrings can actually fuse you with a dead person as well. So this could just literally be the physical appearance and power of Goku with some sort of other evil being taking over his body. The question is, who the hell is that? Do you have any theories? Um, Zilcho? uh, Hercule? 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 Yeah. (laughs) Hercule suddenly in the future of... No Tr- one. of, of the, the the androids and cell taking over Hercule maybe it was uh, uh i don't know man who's evil that could have thought to figure that out like most of the bad guys don't even know they exist exactly like th- that's like for some reason it feels like everyone is uh uh it, it doesn't know everything our main characters know like mm-hmm. our main characters know the Omni God. They know so many things. Mm-hmm. What's is is that his name? The Omni God. Uh, the Omni King. The Omni Zeno, King. Whatever you really want to call him. The point is, they know so much more than every bad guy they've ever faced. If mm-hmm. you think about it, you know, like so, the idea of a bad guy knowing as much as they do mm-hmm. um, is kind of ridiculous. And how could Black Goku um, fuse with someone that would even make him a threat to Goku and Vegeta? Now I know that's the thing, and that's what's going to be like. Even if he fused with Frieza, it wouldn't be. Powerful no, enough. not at all. You know, especially with the. I mean, just the fact that they have god powers now. Yeah, it, there's there's going to be some crazy twist to this arc that we don't realize quite yet. And, and interestingly enough, if this is someone who had access to the Potara earrings, the only way that they would be able to get them is if they knew the Kai's or like the Supreme Kai's, because that's where they come from. Yeah, because that's what the Kai's actually wear. Yeah. some of them are actually fused with other beings. Your old Kai, he used to look young, but some old witch met up with him and he accidentally got fused with her uh and then he gave those earrings uh to gohan i believe yes so uh multiple beings can be fused into one so this could potentially be something that's been constantly fusing with other things for thousands of years and we have to also realize this is an alternate parallel timeline universe so where good knows? people could be bad exactly we could we could be seeing the return of a character who was good who is now bad or something entirely new one of the biggest theories i've seen from people is that there was this villain who appeared in this dragon ball game that came out called dragon ball z xenoverse which features this villain by the name of demigra really weird name basically he's this villain who travels through time and he also happens to be wearing these earrings which look very similar to the Potara earrings as well. A lot of people are theorizing maybe they're going to try and incorporate the Dragon Ball Xenoverse characters into this story, which I think would be kind of interesting because Demigra is not exactly the the most amazing villain in the world, but he certainly has a flashy design and he even has a final form, which makes him look like a combination of like Parunga and some other crazy monsters. Are, are you looking up Demigra right now? Yeah, yeah, he's like this kind of... Red-haired, staff, mm-hmm. cape-wearing motherfucker. And then he transforms into this big blue monster. That's his final form. Yeah, yeah, I see that. He mm-hmm. definitely looks like a... What was that monster you just uh, referenced? The uh, one Parunga. Could, he's the one that could suck energy. Like he Actually, could. no, that's Yakon. He looks he's like, a combination of Parunga and Yakon. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what yeah. he looks like. So it's kind of <laughs> cool. Well, we'll see if that's it, though. 
Also, you saw in the preview that there was a monstrous type creature that mm-hmm. Trunks was fighting. So it could be this transformed being, you know, uh, Domingra. Uh, it could be, like you said, it could be some sort of monster that finds maybe Goku's dead body, uses the earrings on him, and fuses and becomes one with him. Yes. Because, I mean, if this is that timeline, like, I've, I have haven't seen any confirmation. Because I watched the episode, and I don't remember them even saying, even in the preview, that this is... The, the trunks that we know, the future trunks that we're uh, familiar with, if that's the actual timeline. This could be one from a parallel dimension. The only reason I keep thinking that is because they're incorporating Mai into the storyline. That's true. Which is strange because that would mean in Trunks's future universe that the Pilaf gang found the Dragon Balls and also made themselves young at that time as well. Which I think is a little strange. And then she also just like in current Dragon Ball Super, met Trunks and fell in love with him. At least that's what I'm assuming. I I think they do have some sort of relationship, which is really strange when you really start to think about it, but... Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Yeah, that's kind of the rule with Dragon Ball at this point. Yeah. Um, But I love that we're getting the return of future Trunks, who has also gone through something of a slight redesign. He's now got blue hair. Again, leading me to believe that this is possibly another parallel alternate universe that we don't know about. We'll see, because I just... Uh, I'm excited about this arc, but like, I actually don't really want to guess where all this is going. I just want to see what happens. Just watch it unfold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. I'm right there with you. Um, I think the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen, makes this really exciting because even when we were kids and we were watching Dragon Ball Z on Toonami and everything, like every day after school, we 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 had kind of a general idea of what was going to happen. Because the Japanese version had existed for years, and you could look that stuff up online, and, you know, fighting against Freeze and everything. We knew he was going to become a Super Saiyan. And that's because, in a lot of the imagery and the intros of the show, they would clearly show Goku transforming and having, you know, the, the golden hair. And we'd be like, yeah. when's that going to yeah. happen in the series? Yeah, exactly. You know, we knew eventually it was going to lead up to that. The intro and, ruined it. Yeah, Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. And then finally when he does, it's like, yeah, that was cool. But it's like, I knew this was going to happen. This is the first time in the series for Japanese and American fans. We're just like, we have no idea what's going to go down here. And uh, that's what makes it really exciting. And I can't wait to see how many, like, timelines this is actually going to span. Like, if Goku and Vegeta and their group are going to go to Trunks' timeline, or if they're going to somehow come to theirs, or if they're going to travel to an alternate universe. I mean, what are the gods of destruction like in the alternate universe that Trunks exists in? Or is it really just the gods of destruction we met from the parallel universe that we just had the tournament arc from? Ah, my head's hurting just thinking about it. There's a lot of, uh, a lot going on here. Mm-hmm. We'll see what's up, you know? Yeah, I'm pumped up. I hope that Trunks uses his sword. I hope it's not just some some cool accessory that he's going to wear on his back. I hope he incorporates it more into his attack. I think it makes him more unique. Uh, the preview makes it seem like he is going to use it a little bit more against whatever the hell that big monster thing is. Just, oh, I'm so excited for this arc, man. I want to see if it is the same Trunks. That means he had to have trained with Vegeta and is super strong. Yeah, because so. this, this will be the Trunks that came back. Yeah from the current timeline and was helping them in the battle against Cell and everything. This is the Trunks that could essentially transform into Broly's form. Yeah, the, the buff Trunks. Yeah, the super... When, when and, DBZ lost its way for a while and decided the more powerful you are, the more ripped you got. Exactly. You know? And then he came back to his timeline and just wiped the floor with Cell. God. Just made him look like a bitch. The one thing I hate about that part is that they just decided no budget for that episode and it looks like shit. Compared it's not... Awful. Oh, it looks bad, Corey. Ooh. It looks real bad. Go watch it close and you'll see. <laughs> it's not episode whatever bad of Super. Yeah. Uh, was that episode five? Episode five. It's Infamous not episode, episode five, five bad, but it is pretty close. Mm. So it always pisses me off. <laughs> always. I mean, it did just come after like the end of the cell art too. So. Where they were like maxing out and, you know, there was a Gohan cell finisher and it was mm-hmm. really cool. And then they're like, oh, out of money. Mm-hmm. I know everyone likes future trunks but whatever too bad <laughs> so yeah that was that was kind of interesting uh but yeah like uh, i'm excited to see where dragon ball super goes but at the same time i don't want to guess i just want to watch mm-hmm. just see what happens yep and, and uh, we're not going to be spoiled by the manga version either because we're ahead of that they're, they're way ahead of it at this you know i haven't even reviewed the last chapter you lazy fuck face there's nothing more to say i almost thought about <laughs> releasing a review Uh, Like, I was just going to do the standard thing, the title and everything, and it was just going to be me sitting down in a chair, reading a book, and then I'm just going to look up, I'm going to be like, just watch the episode, and that's it. 
That's all I was going to release, because nothing new happens in the manga version. It's just a super condensed version of the story that we've already seen, and they haven't even gotten to the final part yet. And by the time they do get to that, we're already going to be knee-deep in some Trunks storyline. So I'm kind of interested to see what that transition is going to be. I highly doubt that the manga version is going to do the, uh, the Planet Potafu arc, which is all about the superhuman, gooey, purple water. They're probably going to skip that one entirely. I hope they do, because that would be a big waste of a chapter. It kind of would, yeah. They could probably do the whole thing. Yeah, they would do it in one chapter if they do do that. Um, which wouldn't be awful, and the arc wasn't terrible. It just sort of came out of fucking nowhere. And again, so- had somewhat disappointing animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. They just mm-hmm. need to kill some time. I get yeah. it. You know, they already released the picture of Black Goku. So, you know. That's I all. didn't expect them to do that either. Like when they released that. And uh, I was almost kind of disappointed that they did that. Yeah, I was like, oh. Because it's like, goes. oh, well, it's just Goku now. Yeah, we know, you know now. Unless we get to see what the other half of his face looks like. Or maybe there's something weird with his body that we don't see quite yet. For all we know, that one portion of his face is the only thing that looks like Goku. And everything else just looks like a fucking monster. Or he has a transformation. Probably has a transformation. That's probably what it is. Probably mm-hmm. the he combined with someone, but instead of getting the uh, dual look, they just get a, mm-hmm. a transformation instead. Mm-hmm. They can just say these are the, some other earrings that do the, the thing, but you have to transform into the other person. Interesting. And but by the way, the the combination of things. How do you know you can combine with someone dead? I don't remember I them. Looked ever it seen. up on the Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Anyway, so the point is, um, but when you fuse with someone, you don't take over their power. You actually have them as like a subcon. You're both subconsciously there. Like Goku and Vegeta. Do they talk to each other a little bit? It's weird because or is their voices just mushed on top of each other. They're kind of mushed, um, but it's different when you watch different versions of the show. Like if you watch it in English or in Japanese, they do sound slightly different. Like in the English version, it's like a combination of like Goku and Vegeta are talking at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I think the rules are like whoever is more powerful, uh, like they're they're like the predominant like power or like like Piccolo and mm-hmm. Kami. Yeah, but that's what's also strange about this whole Dark Goku thing, like. There's a being out there that's stronger than Goku and was able to, like, use his body? It's, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, this wouldn't be the first time Dragon Ball's broken rules. They break rules all the damn time. Hell, they play God almost every single arc. I mean, it's just, we'll just have to see. Yeah, that's really, why I said just, I, I, to guess and to be right would be a pretty, pretty powerful concept. Know? And and everyone and their mom has released their own, you know, theories about what it could be. Some people are saying that this is the Goku from uh, Shampa's universe who became evil and this is actually from Universe 6, and this is that future that they're all from. I don't know. It's just, it's so weird. We're just going to have to wait and see it play out. I mean, but it's it's an exciting time to be a Dragon Ball fan. There's a lot of mystery. Future Trunks is coming back, which you just have to get excited over. Such a kick-ass character, and the arguably the best version of Trunks. I mean, really, would you choose Future Trunks or the current kid version as, like, your favorite version of the character? It, it has to be Future Trunks. Exactly. I mean, Future Trunks is maybe even... Unless you're you're either a Goku or a Vegeta fan, but mm-hmm. after that, you're always a Future Trunks fan. Yeah, you even know? more so than Gohan. Of course, more than Gohan. Like what that, the fuck that, are you talking about? And Gohan? Future Trunks have one of the best introductions in the series because he just appears out of nowhere, and you're like, "Who the fuck is this and, Super Saiyan with a sword who killed Frieza in one hit?" Well, you know what? He fights with. Uh, he doesn't fight like he's in a tournament. He fights yeah. brutal. He fights to kill because he's from a. Uh, post-apocalyptic future yeah where he had to every fight he gets into is like the end there was no Mm -hmm. training you know besides goku and or gohan and him you Mm -hmm. know there was just every time you see a bad guy they're probably stronger than you and you better try to kill him or Mm -hmm. get away immediately you know like he just comes from a fucking comes from iraq you know like you got fucking (laughs) iraq over there war zone kid he comes over here he doesn't do anything else but stab people in the face you know hey frieza (laughs) 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 alakbar yeah he fucking (laughs) chops him up Beheads Frieza, you know, like Beheads sh- Frieza, it's a really, <laughs> really flashy way. Still, I think maybe the best kill from the entire series. So damn satisfying, cutting up Frieza completely clean in half, and then chopping him into a million pieces, and then blasting him at point blank range. Ugh, that's oh, satisfying. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. you're gonna remember that every time you rewatch that scene. Yeah, now you are. You know, <sighs> uh, yeah, it's just uh, he fights completely different than mm. any other character. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 
Awkward pause. Awkward pause. Speaking of awkward guys, we are sorry that we do not have awkward imager readings ready for you guys. We've gotten a lot of requests to bring that back, and I would like to bring that back eventually. It's just uh, we just sort of did the show on the fly today because we're short on time. Um, but next time we're going to try and prepare a couple of those for you uh, so we can insert that into the big E3 show. And if there's any other news that comes out, you know, we got to talk about that. Uh, so we'll definitely bring that back for you guys. Give us topics as well. We love yes. them topics. Can't stress that enough. Even if it's just questions you guys want to ask us, please, we would love to answer them for you. I uh, Boxer briefs, just in case you guys were wondering. Yeah. <laughs> it's the perfect combination. It gives you the support you need and breathing room. And on that note, I would just like to take a moment to thank our network, Rogue Intel. These guys are awesome. Rogue Intel is great because they allow us to make the show the way we want to make it, and they let us be ourselves. So make sure to check out the other shows at rogueintel.com. And if you want to help keep the network going, please head over to rogueintel.com slash Amazon for all of your shopping needs. I highly recommend it. Amazon is the best way to pick up your favorite products. I just ordered two Gundam DVDs yesterday. They've already shipped. I can't wait to watch them, and it doesn't cost you any freaking extra. Extra. And remember, a portion of that will go towards the Rogue Intel Network and all of their amazing shows, so make sure to check those out. Yeah, you guys, really uh, do check out Rogue Intel. We do talk about them at the end of every podcast, but there are a ton of really interesting shows there. And we're really trying to make our own network, and uh, I, I'm really proud to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you for listening to this podcast, guys. Please give us a thumbs up or give us a rating on iTunes. That is truly, man, we need some more ratings on iTunes. I think it's like the last time we got one was two, three months ago. Jesus. And you guys gave us a strong start. We got a ton of good ratings, but we'd like some more like up-to-date ones. you yeah. know. Uh, so thank you again for listening. And until next time, the powerful Nerdcast is out.